Yeah, and I think that's where the responsibility, the CEO of your life comes in. Exactly. Because I think when you are a person who wants to take high responsibility, we can get a little bit confused in that. It's take responsibility for your goals and your vision and everything else you can under that. Mm. But if an environment is not right for you, the most responsible thing you can do is stay true to your vision and what is right for you. Exactly. Move, right. So yeah. rather than because otherwise you become the victim of that and that's not responsible. Good morning, Alison. Welcome to the Simple Marketing Solutions podcast. It's going to be a great episode. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts about women in business and becoming the CEO of your business and how that plays out in in their roles as business owners. I would love for you, though, before we get into all of the nitty gritty, to let our audience know a bit about yourself. Absolutely. And thank you, Amita, for having me on your podcast. I am very much looking forward to the conversation. Uh, Just so I'm not a stranger to everyone, my background, I have been in business coaching for about 13 years now. So my original background, if we peel back a little bit, uh, I am an occupational therapist by profession, then went into, developed probably more into coaching, spent a lot of time within um, corporate organizations in in that industry, Mm -hmm. Um, certainly learning, you know, things that uh, could be done better, that is for sure, Um, through that. And then from there, uh, obviously started building out coaching. I also have um, had a network marketing business, extremely successful at that, walked away from that though to due to values conflict, re-established coaching. So many iterations of what I've done, but it's always Mm -hmm. been the same underlying purpose, which is to help other people flourish and prosper. Uh, so just different, different, different paths, still the same goal. Yes. And uh, I've been an athlete my whole life. I'm a pro athlete for Miss Fitness Australia. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably me. I'm a mum. Uh, I'm a wife. I'm a dog mum. So <laughs> life is busy, right? We're yeah. juggling away with all of those things. But that kind of yeah. gives you a little bit of a, well, everyone a little bit of background about me. I'm extremely passionate about helping people be successful in their business, making a profitable business, but also one that actually builds the life that you actually want. And mm. I was having a really interesting conversation with uh, someone yesterday, a meter about mm. just exactly that, right? Like when you, you know, she said, well, how do I get to the next level in my business? And I said, well, what, what is that? What does that look like? She said, well, I want to get to a hundred grand. She wasn't there yet. I'm like, mm. okay. So have you done your numbers? Have you worked out a plan? Do you know what that even looks like to you? And she's like, oh, well, no. And I said, well, would you build a house without knowing what you want the house to look like? (laughs) Would you build the house without a plan, right? Like if you want to build the Eiffel Tower, it's a slightly different foundation to if you want to build a shack. So, you know, and and so often I think to Amita as women is we don't always let ourselves have the pleasure of imagining what we really, really want. Mm. And that is something that I really enjoy helping people hone in on and then put that actual roadmap together to get there um yeah hopefully that answers that question (laughs) yeah yeah no it does thank you for the insights and you know like you said you've got a lot going on being you know a mom a wife a a successful business owner running this coaching business um and I love the fact that you brought up this client um, that you were talking to yesterday um, because it is such a common thing to see where we don't spend enough time with the planning of our business and really imagining what that would look like for us and what we would be happy with as well. Do you find in those situations that it's you find it common when you're talking to women in business? Very common. Mm. Yes, very common. Where um, when I ask that question, mm. blank, right? Often people don't know the answer or they give me a generic answer. I want to be successful. Yes, but what does that mean 
to you? What's the definition mm. for you? Because otherwise you will build someone else's version of success. Exactly. You know, and yeah. I think that you know, the topics we're talking about today, Amita, relate very directly to knowing what that is, right? If you want to, do you need to know what you're building in order to then be able to have a schedule? Because what are you putting in it? Yes. Otherwise, you're at effect of your time. You're not in control of your time, and you certainly don't feel like you are. Uh, not to say that at times things are chaotic. Like most women live a blended existence of yes. multiple hats and things like that. Like that's life. Yes. I don't know that I think work life balance is a realistic goal for people because balance is non movement. Mm. You know, mm. and I I feel what is more of a realistic goal around, you know, what I what I believe the concept of work life balance is is being able to move fluidly. Mm. Yes, that makes more sense. Um, and when you describe that to clients that you work with, what is their response? when I talk to them about the the working towards a fluid, yeah. yeah. Well, they feel less tight because they also, mm. you know, most of the women respond, oh, they be, because they're striving for this thing that is called balance, yeah, not realizing that then everything won't move. Yes. And that's unrealistic. So it's like all of mm. a sudden the pressure's taken off. They can actually mm. look at it and then go, oh, right. I'm not striving for something that's unrealistic anymore. My life is going to be, fluid some yeah. might call that slightly chaotic mess but we'll call it fluid yes. you know so where you can blend and you can you know it's okay to do that there doesn't mm. because I think work-life balance is more of an idea of a masculine like it's this right mm. most women can't fit into that no if something then if they try to just do that rigid way and then something goes wrong they fall things fall apart very right. quickly so i'm i'm very much for a schedule right i think mm. you need to be scheduled if you want to be successful i think you have to have a schedule you need to do know when you're doing what but that actually gives you more fluidity because it's like having a, a playing field with no lines on it like that it doesn't work for a game yes. or having a playing field with lines on it. Well, that's going to be a better game because people know where to move. Exactly. So that's what a schedule's like. And so then from a time management perspective, then that's how you gain more time because you know what's happening when as well. Um, and, you know, in business as a woman, like you were saying, it's hard to fit into that model of, um, the way that we've been we've thought that society's taught us you know in terms of this is the structure this is what you have to follow um being more fluid with it uh, obviously is going to allow you to adapt it and make it your own which i think is also the really important thing is that i find that women in business feel like we do have to follow this way that's been taught but each of us are individuals and we have to choose what works for us, for our lives, for our families, for what we are trying to create for our business. And there isn't a one size fits all when it comes to that. Um, do you feel that as women in business, we do you, have you noticed that you they don't give themselves the authority or to, to be the CEO and step into that role of, you know, overseeing the business instead of always being at that level of doing, doing, doing and ticking boxes. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely think that from my experience and I've worked with, you know, people I've worked with business owners from startup all the way through to multiple seven figures. So the, but the, 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 the issues change slightly, but the mm. that level of wanting to and being willing to wear that CEO heart of your life and your mm. business is something that, that I find a lot of women find very challenging to do mm. because 
of the perception. I don't want to be seen as bossy. I don't Mm. want to be seen too forceful. I don't want to upset anyone. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, right? What Mm. what, what do you want? (laughs) Like what do you actually want? I know what you don't want, but what do you want? And until you're willing to say what you actually want and ask for it, Mm. right? It, once you've got like knowing what you don't want is important because then it can allude to what you do want exactly however there's another step because once you know what you do want you must ask and that is very confronting right that's mm. putting that ceo heart on and actually asking and being willing to take the responsibility to if you have a team to train them and make sure that they can handle that responsibility. In your household, it can be the same, right? Giving Mm. instructions. You know, one of my clients, for example, very busy. Um, She will not mind me sharing. She uh, was going to be late home from the office and from from their business, right? They have several. But she was going to be late home, home. And she rang her husband and said, I'm going to be late home, um, won't get into whatever time I think it was eight or something like that now what she had thought she had asked for in that statement was can you please cook the dinner for the kids and make sure everything's all sorted yeah. right now she got home at eight and lost the plot because she was so frustrated that there was no dinner cooked and everything hadn't been handled but she never actually asked she said I shouldn't have to and I'm like well no one can read your mind Mm. people are busy in their own life doing their own things even if it's your significant other Mm. or your children or whatever like they're on their own pathway your Mm. employees they're on their own thinking and pathway so that it's important to actually ask in a way that they can hear then once you've asked it's not enough just to ask though you the the um, the responsibility of the person asking is to make sure the information is understood so did that person at the other end of what you just asked actually duplicate and understand what you just said they might have gone yes 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 Mm. and they may have heard you know chinese whispers right like you said red they heard orange yeah so it's you want we wonder why mistakes happen it's because we didn't check at that first point and often we can feel as women as oh my gosh I'm being very pushy and I'm intrusive no you're just making sure that it's going to go right it's not micromanagement it's good communication there's a very big difference mm. so then you can check did that person duplicate and understand what I just said can you can you say that back to me just so I can make sure that we're both on the same page right it doesn't have to be a pushy thing to say it's just good communication that person feeds that back if it's not what you said you now have an opportunity to correct it then and And there yeah then and there and then Amita I would go one the next step would be to check with the person if they actually have the space and can do it in the time frame you want so let's say you Hmm. wanted same example dinner cooked before eight o'clock does that person have the space to do it with everything in their world Mm. yeah to do it by 8 p.m now if you say can you do that by 8 p.m and they say yes great perfect okay if they say no i've got blah 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 you can then renegotiate yes yes so that the, the the embracing the ceo heart is for me from my perspective is about very clear communication and it is very confronting it's not easy to do because there's so much societal you know still conditioning mm. uh, which still shocks me to this day we burned our bras a long time ago and yet we are still in yeah. this societal conditioning where women are you know the good girl and sit back and be quiet and if you are you know pushing forward like that there's a woman who is the ceo of Qantas now she still gets paid less it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense right so we still you know so it it does take confront and it does take strength but if we are all moving towards this we can change that paradigm we can change what's happening but generally women in my opinion uh tend to be better communicators 
when we give ourselves the space to do Mm. so. And that is the important thing is that we, I think, have to get out of our own way and realize that there is power in us using the skill of being good communicators um, to really just embrace that and, yeah, you know, move forward from where we're at right now. And we, we all talk about those changes we want to see, but like you just said, we all have to take that step together within our own businesses, within our own, you know, even if you're employed in those roles, how do we take that step to make it better for the future generation of women out there as well. Um, So it's not, you know, I think sometimes we also forget that what we're doing, even if you've just got a micro business to a big corporation with, you know, hundreds of employees under you, is that you do have the ability to have an influence on what happens now and for the future. So every little step, does count a hundred percent I agree yeah. and for women to really take ownership of that CEO heart that they you know every, every woman has the ability to wear a CEO at a CEO hat no matter what they're doing that can be in their family that can yeah. be in their business all it means is that you are choosing to be of the highest responsibility and you are communicating your needs and wants clearly Mm. and making sure it goes right right like Mm. then you know has that gone right where did that go wrong where did the communication break down how can we do that better Mm. because Mm. so often it's a communication breakdown yes and I have noticed as well even with those communication breakdowns it's so easy for us to put the blame on somebody else and not take the responsibility you know and when you're looking at that role of being the ceo in your household in your business wherever that is like you were describing that communication is so important but realizing that somebody has to take responsibility as well because we can't move forward when we continue to just blame others and not take responsibility for our own actions or inactions or verbalizing correctly to that other person as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think with that too, sometimes like everyone wants to be right. Not a person on the planet that doesn't want to be right. It's the hardest words that come out of your mouth is I take full responsibility for that. Yeah. But I can tell you if someone doesn't, the, the situation does not move on. No. And two people, argue, one person has to stop arguing for an argument to finish, right? Otherwise, it's exactly. And, and when, if someone doesn't take full responsibility, now you're not necessarily, in taking full responsibility, you're not necessarily saying what you did is okay. You're saying, I take responsibility in my part in what then happens is the person can calm down enough and you can both move on to actually talk about it, to resolve it, to get to the next point. Yes. And I'm not saying this is easy because it's one of the hardest things I do in my life, particularly in my household, right? Like it can be where it's the hardest yeah. is for me to say, I take full responsibility for that. And it's a practice and I can get really rusty really quickly. <laughs> exactly. Right? Like I have to remind me, like, oh no, okay, being triggered, stop, take a breath, do that again. And we have a practice in my house where we go, okay, let me do that again, right? Mm. Because mm. you can get it wrong. And you can, if you, you can also do that in your business. Yes. Exactly. So take responsibility for that. We totally pear shaped that did not work. Yeah. Let's do that again. Yeah. Because there is all this opportunity to learn from that, you know, and when you're aware of it and are willing to just take that step back, take a breath and redo, things generally will run a lot smoother. Everybody's happier and you get the result that you were looking for originally as well. Um, so, yes, there's we do need to just 
get over the fact that it's okay to not, you know, not be right all the time. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We so want to be. Yeah. And that yeah. does not mean that you're not, right? Yes. However, to move on from a stuck point, someone exactly. has to take responsibility or yep. nothing changes. Exactly. And then resentment builds. And then, you know, weeks later, you wonder why the wheels are falling off something. Yeah. And it just when, you know, causes so much more conflict and pain exactly. that could have all been prevented quite easily. Yeah. And sometimes we just, we do have to swallow our own ego, right? Yeah. Those words out loud. <laughs> um, and, you know, and, and it is, it's a really difficult thing for most people to do. And, but again, it's a practice. Are you going to get all these things right? Is it going to be perfect? No, stop trying to be perfect. You will mess it up many times, yeah. getting to the point where it actually feels more natural. And there are still times, even when it's starting to become more natural, that you'll be triggered by something and it won't, mm -hmm. and you'll have to then go, whoa, what, what just happened, right? Re and then go, okay, look, next time I will know that in this situation, I need to approach it in a different way. Like there's always going to be challenges. Yeah, absolutely. And on the topic of challenges, you know, you've been in business for many years, how have you personally, or what has been the biggest challenge for you in your business? Over um, I, yeah, so many uh, growing it as fast as my mind wants to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not, with my results, I am so impatient, very patient with yeah. everyone else, but for my results, like completely impatient. Um, so that would be one of the biggest challenges, learning patience, right? Mm. And learning the longevity of the seed you plant today is, you know, it will grow whenever. So just plant a lot of seeds because if you just plant one seed, you, you can kind of drive yourself a little bit batty. Um, that would be one. And then the other one in um, my previous iteration of business, like I'm quite a strong person. Yeah. I always have been, but that can cause for, uh, the environment that that was that caused um, conflict at the higher levels. And there was a lot of undermining that I didn't realize was happening. So it wasn't like I knew something wasn't right. Intuitively, something wasn't right, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I am very grateful for COVID because it made me stop and look. Mm. And I realized it gave me the ability because we couldn't do some of the things we were doing, events and things like that. It gave me the ability to really look at it and go, oh my goodness, do I want to be aligned with these people? Are these? No. Is this my version of success? No. Yeah. Is this actually harming me? Yes. Mm. These people are actually under my, like I'm allowing, I'm not, I take full responsibility, but mm. I am allowing myself to be undermined and I could see my confidence withering and I didn't mm. know that was happening until then. So mm. one of the biggest challenges I've ever had in business was to walk away from that business, wow. to decide that despite my efforts to change things, I put, I will always attempt to go to source and fix it, yeah. but I could not. And so at that point, I had a very challenging decision to make. Do I walk away from something extremely successful because it no longer serves me and there won't be much left of me at the end of it? And I had mm. to make that, like my why, my bigger why, one mm. is my family mm. and two is making sure that there's a generational change, right? Like the stuff we've spoken about. So I couldn't do that there. Mm. So that was probably my very articulating that like really owning my CEO hat yeah. and I realized I hadn't been I hadn't been wearing that CEO hat of my life as well as my business on a bigger level so not on the micro level of the business itself but on the bigger level of the vision mm. I'd taken that off and I'd let someone else run it mm. and that so I so I, as much as COVID the pandemic was very hard. Yeah. I am very grateful because I wouldn't be in this new iteration had that not happened. I would probably still be doing that. 
Mm. So, but I, but the consequence of being in an environment like that is things start to go pear shaped, whether that turns up in your body, whether that turns up in other areas of your life that, you know, the challenges were turning up in my marriage. And I'm like, why is my marriage falling apart? What the hell is going on? This is weird. Like we're usually such a strong force. Yeah. Um, my health. I'm like, why am I getting sick? What's going on? Why is my, like, I'm an athlete. Like I just don't do that. That's just not normal. Yeah. So, you know, it shows up, it can show up in all sorts of different ways. So I would say that is by far putting my big girl pants on and really putting my CEO hat on of my life to then change the direction and go, not that business. Mm. I'm walking away and I will start again, even though I'm extremely afraid and have no real idea of how I'm going to do that or what that's going to look like. I just need to do this now. Now that is for some people, that's the right thing for two. Some people, it can be partially like I did attempt the partial thing first, but I came to the point where that wasn't going to work either. I, I had to get out of that environment. And so I chose to do so. So that would probably be my very biggest challenge ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a huge challenge. And similarly, I've been through a very similar thing at the beginning of COVID as well. And, you know, I think the more that I speak about that as well, the more I realize that there's so many people that have been in situations like that. And it's really tough. You know, it's really tough to to just be able to take that step back and look at everything that's happening in your life you know where you say everything's you know starting to fall apart and become pear-shaped in your relationships at home and in your physical mental emotional body as well um it's trying to peel back the layers and understand well why is this happening get to the source of that because that's where you do need to go. And as difficult as it is to face that, you know, you you never want to say, ah, oh, you know, it's this situation, this business or these people that are the cause of it. Um, we always try and work it out. But if it's not, then as difficult as it might be, we have to make that decision because long term, the more you put yourself in that situation, the more impact negative impact it's going to have on all areas of your life and you know like you said at the beginning what is the life you want to live what does that look like for you and if that's not serving you anymore you have to be able to just stand in that and make that decision and move be able to move forward from that yeah and i think that's where the responsibility the ceo of your life comes in exactly because i think when you are a person who wants to take high responsibility we can get a little bit confused in that it's take responsibility for your goals and your vision and everything else you can under that mm. but if an environment is not right for you the most responsible thing you can do is stay true to your vision and what yes. is right for you exactly move, right so yeah. rather than because otherwise you become the victim of that and that's not responsible very very true exactly and it's easy isn't it to to play the victim um we we see that happening so often yet again if you come back to being the ceo of you and your life and your goals and your vision then playing victim isn't going to get you any closer to that. A hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. And sometimes we, I don't even know if we know we're being the victim because we think we're mm. being responsible. But, and I think yeah. too, you spoke about, you know, with the, the, there can be things that are breaking down and we can put a lot of focus on think, fixing those things, you know, your health, your relationships, et cetera, which obviously there needs to be mending there, but we can still be yeah. missing the point, right? of yep. what's actually causing it what's Absolutely. causing that and until that thing is addressed the true resolution of everything else doesn't occur exactly it's so true i mean i had so much falling apart at that time as well and 
as much as I was trying to fix and I guess put band-aids on all of those le leaking holes at that time, everything just felt so difficult. You know, everything just wasn't coming together as much as I was working on it. And until I stepped away from it, um, from the issue and from the business, was I able to start realizing, okay, that was the, the cause of it all. Now, when I go back and I look at my health and try and fix that, I'm in a better place mentally to be able to do that. And my body's in a better place. So the healing can actually occur. You're taking away that flame that's burning away and causing the damage, right? So things can settle down. Exactly, yes. You're taking away the thing that's inflaming. Yes, exactly. You know? And then you actually have an opportunity to calm down, to heal, to all, all those other things, which are, you know, put the relationships back together, get your financial situation back on track, because yeah. it can all go very pear-shaped very fast from my experience. Yeah. Um, because you you're trying you know in an environment that is toxic too or not right for you you can be spend all your time trying to manage that and management mm. is not ceo being a ceo they are mm. not the same thing so you've dropped being the ceo mm. and you put a management hat on it's not the same right mm. when you just super glue the damn ceo hat on if you need to right <laughs> sometimes <laughs> i think get it on <laughs> Stay there because uh, it falls off and it's like, oh, that's right. <laughs> Wrong hat, right? Stick the other one back. And then, in, like, as yeah. women, like I said at the very beginning, it's fluid. You are juggling hats. But if you remember that you, you are the CEO of your own life and you are the CEO in your business, it can really help, I feel, with allowing yourself to lead you where you want to go. Mm. Yeah. Very well said, Alison. Very well said. Um, and you know what? I'm going to write that on a post-it note and stick it here because <laughs> there's just so much value to just be reminded of that when, you know, when we start flicking those hats off and putting that management hat back on or the doer hat on, remind yourself that it's the CEO hat that needs to be there and keeping that vision alive of where you want to be headed. Um, is so, so important. So thank you for that. Um, before we wrap up, Alison, I wanted to just ask you, you know, we've been talking a lot about the CEO hat and how important it is in every area of your life. Is there any other piece of advice that you feel as woman in business or woman in life, we need to be made aware of hmm good question <laughs> uh i will come back to and really we, we've touched on it we've said it it is okay to ask for what you want and in fact mm. i'll step one back it's okay to know what you want it's mm. okay to allow yourself what you want and it's okay to ask for what you want also asking for help is not a failure yeah strong strong advice and i think we all need to hear that and again to remember that in those times where we are you know struggling by ourselves in our business and we think we have to do it ourselves we have to show the world that we can do it yet it can feel really difficult and being able to ask for help isn't a, a bad reflection on ourselves if anything, like you said, I think it's actually a strength to be able to do that um, and identify what isn't working for you and ask for the help to, to get it to work for you, right? So thank you. Thank you, Alison, for all your generosity in being so open and sharing your opinions and thoughts around being the CEO and taking control of your life, your business, and that communication element so important thank you for bringing all of that together for us oh thank you Amida so much for having me it has been my absolute pleasure